in hindsight, this wasn't just a process of me learning about a faith in an academic kind of sense. This was a process of me dismantling everything that I knew about the world and myself, not just Islam. Dreaming of Assalamu alaikum guys, I hope that your first week of Ramadan has gone very smoothly. Today we're going to be talking about not a very smooth subject at all. Um, I'm going to be talking about my convert story. Why I haven't shared this story before is because I don't feel like it's inspirational. When you go online and you look for convert stories, usually people are looking for something really inspirational. They're going to cry during watching it and they're going to leave with a really uplifted feeling. Um, I can't really promise any of that. Don't expect some kind of magical story like I walked into the masjid um, and I saw a light shining down on the Quran and I suddenly was a believer. Like it didn't, it didn't happen that way. It was slow and it was long and it's been going on, you know, for the last seven years, I guess. So yeah, this is a story. So from a very early age, I remember not believing in God and being quite certain about that. Um, you know, I was exposed to religion um, in the sense that people around me were religious, but, you know, in a very Church of England kind of way, in a very um, kind of, in you know, I've mentioned it before, in the UK, we tend not to speak about religion. There's like, it's, it's on a range of subjects that we don't tend to talk about in, in very polite society, kind of, it's not like for polite conversation because people can get heated and get emotional about it and things. So you know maybe maybe that's an aspect of it but i just i wasn't exposed to very direct people practicing religion so there's a difference between having faith and then actually practicing religion but you know when i was when i was very young i remember going to sunday school maybe when i was like four or five years old we have this thing in the uk sunday school um tends to happen after the church service you go along to the church as children and you learn um you know basic stories from the Bible. And I remember going along to that and really liking that they gave out sweeties <laughs> while, while we were having the lessons and things. Um, but I also remember kind of feeling quite strongly that I didn't believe what they were telling me is to be true. And, you know, I might have been influenced, I don't know, I don't remember, but I might have been influenced by other children telling me, oh God doesn't exist or something like that. But as far as I'm aware, it came from me and then later on when I was in primary school I um, I remember saying to my mum that I wanted to um, get christened because I wasn't christened I wanted to get christened mum was quite surprised by this because you know I think maybe she knew how I felt about God or religion and things um, but she was you know she was happy with that and she was supportive and she kind of said well why you know what's what's brought this on why do you want to become why do you want to be christened and i said well because i'm the only one at school who isn't and that was kind of like you know oh you know i said it and i realized that that wasn't a very good reason to become christened so we didn't get me christened um you know and there's there's a lot of experiences that i had growing up that maybe you know they're not the most positive experiences and they really did cloud the way that i viewed faith um, and the practice of religion um, and I don't really want to get into talking about those things um, and my negative encounters so let's just leave it that I had some bad encounters with people trying to convert me and things like that so you know I had I already had this mixed mixed feelings and this kind of like almost tumultuous relationship with faith um, being very kind of strong in that I didn't I didn't believe in God and that, you know, organized religion is the whole concept and all of these, you know, quite teenage type things. And then despite that, when I was about 14 or 15, I remember very clearly going through a stage. It wasn't a short stage. It went on for quite a long time where I started actively speaking to God in no real capacity. And I, you know, the thing is that I, I grew up thinking of God as a man in the sky with a staff, you know, the Simpsons um, picture of God. That's kind of how I saw God. And then when I was 14, 15, maybe 16 years old, I started to speak to God, but it wasn't God. You know, I, I didn't give it a name. I didn't give it any, any kind of thing. It was just, I just, I didn't think of it further than that. I was just talking to something and finding comfort in something. And I was kind of interested in pursuing that, 
but I didn't, you know, I didn't really know how to. Um, and then I remember I spoke to a friend about it once and he really laughed at me like, what are you talking about? Suddenly you believe in God, like what, what is this? And I never spoke about it to anyone again since then. And then, so fast forward, you know, you got the picture that I was, I was quite firm that I didn't believe in God but I was also kind of confused about this. And also I think that when people take on these really, really strong beliefs against something, I feel like sometimes that indicates that they are struggling with something else or they're struggling to deal with that in some way. Then I met my husband, my then, you know, my now husband. And um, it was a real shock to me because I didn't know that he was Muslim when I first met him. There was nothing about him to tell me that he was Muslim, um, you know, I served him bacon and he very kindly refused to eat it and I didn't really know why he didn't want to eat bacon but it didn't cross my mind for a second that he might um, he might not eat it for religious reasons and then later on um, it came up in conversation in a very natural way and um, I was really shocked because I had a perception about Muslims and about Islam and he did not fit it and yet he was practicing Muslim and very certain of his belief. He, he answered any questions that I had, and I had a lot of questions. I, I wanted to know the answers behind 9-11. I wanted to know the answers behind Boko Haram. I wanted to know the answers behind hijab, because I hated hijab. I wanted to know the answer behind um, halal meat, because I was certain that this is some kind of torture for animals, and all of these things. And, you know, in a very moderate, in a very um, thoughtful and calm way, he's he talked me through everything, every question that I had, he answered them. And, you know, at every stage I was like, hmm, okay, well, that's not, you know, it's not quite the, the impression that I had, but okay, this is interesting, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not scared off by him, I'm not scared off by the religion, he's a normal person, he's intelligent, he's living his life in a normal way, and he happens to be Muslim, okay. And, you know, it took a long time to explain things to me because it was, you know, we were dismantling a, a whole lifetime of um, stereotypes and perceptions that I had and we had to kind of go back to the basics and really like, you know, it took a long time to explain a lot of the things about Islam to me. But I wasn't about to convert and I was very clear about that and my husband respected that. Um, and you know, he, he taught me how to be respectful of, of all religions as well because honestly, I wasn't being respectful of any religion. And then I came to Jordan and that wasn't going to change. I was still very clear that I am not a, I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not anything. But here in Jordan, it's very hard to, to, to say that. So we introduced me as a Christian. And um, people said Happy Christmas to me and Happy Easter to me because, of course, you know, celebrate all of those, all of those events um, in, a, in a cultural way, not in a religious way. And um, I said Happy Eid to them and everyone was very respectful and, you know, it was all very kind of... It was just a lot of mutual respect. But the thing that changed, so the next thing, you know, the first thing was meeting my husband, and then the second thing was that once I was in Jordan and I was surrounded by people practicing faith, whether a Christian faith or a Muslim faith, because I was at the time, the first few years that I worked here in Jordan, that I lived here in Jordan, I worked um, for a Christian organization. So, you know, I was exposed to, to religion on a broad sense. And um, I realised at some point in the first year, oh, I do believe in God. But it wasn't, you know, it was, it was just that I believed that there is a God and it didn't go further than that. And I decided, you know, I have to pursue learning about religion because I'm in a religious country and because I have married a religious man and I'm surrounded by people who practice religion so I started if we were going to start a family then I needed to be respectful of my children as well and you know be as knowledgeable as I could for their sakes um, even though at the time I still had this this really quite immature notion that we wouldn't raise our children with any faith that they would choose their faith when they grew up and they were old enough to make a decision for themselves because I didn't want to brainwash our children or something like that um, you know, when I look back at that and I just, I think it's so funny because it was such a, such a kind of immature way of looking at faith and it just really showed that I didn't understand what it is to have faith and to practice religion. So I continued reading, reading the Quran over this, this period of time, even though being very, very clear that I wasn't converting or anything like that. Um, 
And you know, I think one of the things with with my conversion story is that every stage in this story is punctuated by me overcoming something that some disbelief that I had. So the first one was God. The first one was, oh, I, I realizing I believe in God. The second one was like, okay, well, do I believe in Jesus? Do I believe in the Prophet Muhammad? Do I believe in, you know, and like this. Um, and when I confronted myself with this question, do I believe in the Prophet Muhammad? I said, no, I don't believe. And I, you know, I had to put a pin in that and come back round to it because I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it. It was, he was new to me and I didn't know him. And it actually, as it turns out, he became, so my first step was believing in God. The final step, I went through all of these different, different steps. The final step was me realizing, you know, I believe in the Prophet Muhammad. And um, I just think that that's really beautiful that the first step was punctuated by, by God and the second, the, the final step was punctuated by, by the prophet, you know, and everything else that came in between was kind of, you know, it was like, it was just like filler material or something. So, you know, the second thing I had to, had to come across like angels where I was like, well, I don't really believe in angels. And then I started to read about angels and learn about jinn and, you know, learn as much as I could and put it into different contexts and use different sources and in the end I was like mm, okay I believe in this and then you know every step was like that um, but this was a period you know this went on across seven years so every time I came up against a point that I I couldn't I it didn't it didn't work in my head I couldn't agree with it or I couldn't I could just couldn't understand it then I would go away and I would I would learn about it and this is how I learned not just to not just to accept the faith on behalf of you know the people around me and respecting the people around me but I saw the beauty in it and it was it was that it made sense so in hindsight this wasn't just a process of me learning about a faith in an academic kind of sense this was a process of me dismantling everything that I knew about the world and myself not just Islam not just the stereotypes I had about about Islam and Muslims. It was about dismantling everything that I knew and learning everything afresh. And you know, I look back on it, and I'm really, you know, it was it was a huge thing going through that. And you know, it was emotional turmoil, and it wasn't all highs. You know, it wasn't it wasn't this beautiful thing like walking in the masjid and seeing the Qur'an glowing and, you know, saying la ilaha illallah. It wasn't as simple as that. It was punctuated by so much struggle and so much learning and so much effort. And I had to visit all of these places in my mind that were uncomfortable and I had to go through all of these different changes and just revisit all of these different things. Um, and it wasn't inspirational. It was slow and it was, it was quite arduous. Um, but I think that the lesson that that has taught me that's the most important lesson for me personally is that the, the faith is a journey and um, it's not always easy sometimes it's really hard so like I said um, the Prophet um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the last step for me you know I'd, I'd covered everything you know with you know all the obvious things not everything but I covered all of the obvious things that I wanted to kind of grapple with and then I came back to the Prophet and I was like well where do I begin and someone told me read the biographies learn you know learn about him within a context so I read three biographies I read a biography um, by a Muslim I read a biography by a, um, a historian claiming to be objective but was very subjective um, and not very polite and I read a third one by a very, um, a very well, um, well-grounded, objective historian. And at the end of these three books, I was completely convinced by him. And um, I didn't. It was there was no more that needed to be done. I was like, well, I I believe in God, and I believe in the Prophet, and I believe in the Quran, and I believe in all the in between and everything else that I may struggle with and I come across verses or things that don't make sense to me and all of these things and sometimes you know you have your doubt like wow does the Quran really say that or did the Prophet really say that and then you go away and you read about it and you learn and you put it in context and you know 
it's it's just a really beautiful thing and I, you know you're never you're never going to finish this journey you know during this period islam the, the word itself transformed from being synonymous with terror and oppression women's oppression especially to the reality which is that it's synonymous well no nah, it literally means peace um and the funny thing is that it it really appealed to this hippie side of me from my childhood and this side of this very loving side of me that I you know I haven't I don't really tap into very much um, so while I've become increasingly conservative and increasingly you know rational and logical during this process I've also you know I've also really tapped into all of these really loving hippie things that my mother tried to instill from it, it to instill in me you know this these, these feelings that I've always had about loving the world and loving the earth and all of these things. It all fits together really, really beautifully um, with my perception of Islam and the way that I, the way that I want to practice Islam. Um, so I think that that's just, it's just really beautiful because it's so complex that you can hold these two things that you might think of as being antithetical, like really loving, really beautiful feelings and very logical and very practical things as well. So, yes, I was convinced. Um, and it was around Christmas 2019 that I finally said the words out loud to my husband. Um, it had been, you know, going around in my mind a lot. I had, I, had, I had to come to terms with it myself. It was a huge change to go from really not believing in God at all um, and then identifying completely as Muslim. So eventually I came out and I told my husband and he was so shocked. He just he just didn't expect it at all. He thought all of the research that I had been doing was purely for the kids' sake. I don't think that he thought for a minute that I was actually in the process of converting. Um, so yeah, when people say like, oh, you converted for your husband, it's really, <laughs> it couldn't be further from, from the truth. But essentially that is, that is my story. Um, there's a lot more to be said and there's a lot more in between, but that's basically the, the bare bones of the story. Um, and I know that I've rambled on a lot and I know that my, <laughs> my audio hasn't been recording for the whole thing. So fingers crossed, this isn't gonna be terrible audio for you. Um, but yeah, that's the end. So I hope that this was interesting for you in some way. Um, and inshallah, I wanna talk a little bit more about, about this throughout Ramadan, inshallah. Um, yeah, so I hope that you're having a good Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem and uh, ma'asalamah.